Kia ora. In this video, we're going to have a look at doing a comparison investigation using NZ Grapher. So for a comparison investigation, students should be collecting or sourcing data, describing features comparatively and making an informal sample to population inference. You use a different method when the sample is between 20 and 40 in each group or when the sample is 100 or 1000 in each group. When you're getting data from a source that can easily handle it, getting a sample size over 100 or 1000 per category is recommended. Students can use dot plots, stem and leaf graphs or histograms to support what they're talking about, but they don't provide enough evidence on their own. Students must also produce a box and whisker graph as part of this comparison investigation. Features of the data that students can discuss are center, spread, shape, shift and overlap of the groups, clusters, and unusual or interesting data points. For this video, we're gonna be looking at the Kiwi Capers data sets. So this is a sample of Kiwi birds around New Zealand, and for the first part of this video, I've gone and I've taken a sample of 100 Great Spotted and 100 North Island Brown Kiwis. So let's jump in and have a look at our data. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up my Display Explorer. So the main variable I'm going to look at today is the weight of the Kiwi birds, which is a numerical variable. I also want to look at the species of the Kiwi bird, which is a categorical. This here gives me a bunch of different displays that I could look at to help me explore my data. Any of these graphs you can right click on and go copy image and then you can paste it into your report that you're using. But we're going to click on this one and expand it out. So this here is my dot plot and box and whisker of the weight of the kiwi birds in kilograms by their species. If I hover over any of these points, I can see what point it is. So I can see that this here is a great spotted kiwi with a weight of 1.63 kilograms, which is a bit smaller than some of the other kiwis that are great spotted. And we've also got one here that is quite a bit bigger. Um, and so that's a female with a weight of 4.143 kilograms. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to come along and I'm going to add in some summary statistics. So this here tells me the minimum, the lower quartile, the mean, the median, the upper quartile, the maximum, and the number in each group. Now because I've got 100 in each group, the method I want to be using is the difference between the medians compared to the overall visual spread. So in order to be able to make the claim that B tends to be bigger than A back in the population, or in this case that that the weights of great spotted kiwis tend to be bigger than the weights of North Island brown kiwis back in the population of all of the kiwi birds. The difference between the medians needs to be one fifth or greater of the overall visual spread for sample sizes of around 100. Now we should only be using rough eyeball judgments, we don't need to be using numerical numbers to back this up, we want to be looking at what we can see and going well does that look like it's more than about a fifth. So if I come in here, one of the options I can do is I can tick this DBM and OVS. What this does is it adds in a line here for the overall visual spread and a line for the difference between the medians. So the overall visual spread goes from the lowest lower quartile to the highest upper quartile and the difference between the medians is from one median to the other. Looking at that, I can see the difference between the medians is definitely greater than one fifth of the overall visual spread. So I could be confident saying that back in the population of all kiwi birds, the weight of the great spotted kiwi birds tends to be greater than the weights of the North Island brown kiwi birds. Now that doesn't mean that every single great spotted kiwi bird is gonna be heavier than every single North Island brown kiwi bird. It just means that they tend to go in that direction. If we have a smaller sample size, for example 20 to 40 in each group, we use the half three quarter rule. This rule says that if the median for one of the samples lights outside the box for the other sample, then you can make the claim that B tends to be bigger than A back in the populations. So the idea behind this is the vast majority of group B is bigger than the great whack of group A. You only need one of the medians to lie outside the box, regardless of what's happening with the other median. So let's come and have a look at an example of this. So here I've got my Kiwis again. I've got 32 great spotted and 28 North Island brown. And I can see that this median here is outside this box here. Although this median here is still inside, what we can say here 
is that the vast majority of these North Island browns are smaller than the average great spotted kiwi in our sample. We can visually come and have a look at this as well by looking at this half three quarter rule. So this allows me to highlight what's going on. So I could highlight the top half here and the bottom three quarters here. So I can see that this half here is all bigger than this bottom three quarters. Again, with any of these graphs, you can just right click on them, copy the image, and then you can paste it into whatever it is that you're working on. So that's a bit of an overview of how to use NZGrapher for comparison type investigations. Mm -hmm.